Into to order. Uh, we have several cases on the agenda for tonight. Uh, I'm going to take uh, a couple of them out of order because they look like they're very, very quick action. And uh, I don't want to hold anybody up for those for that purpose. So I'm going to proceed to hear case number 19-20, which is 26 Green Street. I'll read the legal notice. The Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing in the Select Board's meeting room at Town Hall 16 Lowell Street, Reading, Massachusetts, on Wednesday, September 4th, 2019, at 7 p.m. on the application of Wade and Lorraine Wilworth, pursuant to MGL Chapter 40A, Section 9, for a special permit under Reading Zoning Bylaw Section 732 to enclose the existing second story deck at the property located at 26 Green Street in Reading. Unless there's an objection, I'll dispense with the reading of the abutters list, except to say that the abutters were notified as were the following the board of the select board. Police Department, Building Department, Health Department, Engineering Division, Town Conservation Commission, Assessors, EDC, and members and associate members of the Zoning Board of Appeals, as well as the Planning Boards of Wakefield, North Reading, Woburn, Wakefield, Stoneham, and Wilmington. Testimony given before this board is taken under oath, so if anyone here this evening wishes to speak on this case, please stand and raise your hand, and I can surmise that there's no one here that's going to do that, so we don't have to go through with that. Uh, I also have a memo from the applicants requesting that this case be continued until our next meeting on September 18th. So... Unless there's any discussion uh, from the board members on this case, uh, yes, Bob? Uh, yes, uh, uh, maybe you can clarify. I, I think I know what's going on, but maybe for, for the audience or whatever, okay. or even for people that might be sitting at home, I believe we have two cases pending now on this particular address. So we have case well, number 1913 and 1920. Yeah, if I go... Versus, okay. Yeah, go let, ahead. Let me go back. On June, I think it was on June, uh, uh, 19, June 19th, we heard the case 19-13 on this property where they wanted to convert a storage space over the garage to a living bedroom. Uh, that is one that they are also requesting a continuation on until September 18th. Okay. The one I just read into the record, 19-20, is for the same address, but here they want to convert an open deck to an enclosed deck at the same property. And they are also requesting that this one be continued till September 18th, so we can address both of them at that time for this same property. So we'll have to vote on these separately. I'm addressing 19-20 first, okay? Before Which we is, do that, uh, can we get uh, from Mark a little bit of background where this case has been and what, what's been going on? Sure. I mean, we've, we've had now three continuances on case 1913, and now this is the second continuance on 19-20. Um, no, 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 no. This is the first continuance. This is the first continuance. I'm first sorry. continuance on, first continuance on, on 20. 20. This is second the second on 13. one on 13. I was talking about, yeah. Okay. Okay. Here. Okay. Okay. But that's okay. Mark? Um, so the applicants uh, applied for a special permit back in 2011 regarding um, the building of a garage and some uh, other accessory space to their existing um, structure. They were granted a special permit. Part of those, one of the conditions on the special permit was above the new garage was to be storage only, no living space. So they reapplied recently, back in before June, to um, get a modification of that special permit, which has been continued a couple of times. In the meantime, it was also noticed that they planned to enclose the existing deck 
which is a roof deck between the existing structure and the new garage, right. and they wanted to close that. So that's also an extension of the nonconformity of um, the use, the residential use in the, uh, the business district. So that's why they have two separate applications and two continuances. Now, has anybody been in to see you? I mean, are we, are we moving along or are we just sitting I, on the water? I would defer to Andrew on that because they have been visiting Andrew. So in your packets for the September 18th hearing, they do have new architectural renderings, new plot plan for their new cases. Um, they have changed things a little bit where at first they were applying for a four season porch. They go forward with a three season porch and some modifications to the garage that aren't exactly a bedroom, but they'd like to be able to do something with it. Um, so they wanted to get you those plans with time to review it before this hearing. Unfortunately, they couldn't. They just got the plans done, which is why they requested the continuance so that you would have a timely review of the plans and could provide any comments at the next hearing without being surprised by anything. So. We, we do, we, in the new packet, obviously we haven't had a chance to take a look at it, we just got them tonight. There is a plot plan included in that for? I, I believe so. That'll cover both cases? Yep. yep. Okay. There was not one included the last time. Right. That's what I have my notes. Okay. Very good. Any other comments from the board? I'll take two motions. First motion I'll take would be a motion to continue case 19-20 to September 18th. So moved. Second. A second. All in favor? Now I'll entertain another motion to continue case 19-13 dealing with the storage area over the garage also until September 19th, 18th meeting. So moved. So moved by Heather. Would you like to second? Sure. I'll second okay. that. All in favor? Okay. And we'll cover 26 Green Street at that September meeting. All right. The next case on the agenda this evening is 19-09, which deals with 55 Walker Brook Road. I'll read that. Maybe notice into the record. The only Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing in the Selectman's Meeting Room at Town Hall, 16 Lowell Street, Reading, Massachusetts, on Wednesday, June. Uh, yeah. Uh, on uh, Wednesday, uh, September 4th at 7 p.m. on the application of sign design pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 40A, Section 10 for a variance under Reading Zoning Bylaw Sections 4.5.2 and 8.6 Table of Signs as may be determined by the Zoning Board to install a new wall sign that exceeds allowable installation height on the property located at 55 Walker Brook Drive in Reading, Massachusetts. Again, I'll dispense, unless there's an objection, I'll dispense with the reading of the abutters list other than to say that Select Board, Police Department, Building Department, Health Department, Engineering Division, Town Clerk, Fire Department, and Conservation Commission, Assessor's Office, CPDC, and members and associate members of the Board of Appeals, as well as the Planning Boards of Wakefield, Linfield, North Reading, Stoneham, Woburn, and Wilmington. Testimony given before this board is taken under oath. So if you think you may want to speak, please stand and raise your hand. I swear that the testimony given by me before this board will be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. The answer is, I do. Thank you. Uh, I gather you're going to speak for the petitioner. Yes. Um, so I'm Kim Floyd. I'm from Weston and Sampson. I'm the corporate uh, office manager and marketing manager. Um, thank you for taking the time to, to see us again tonight. Since our last meeting in June, we've done a little research. We reached out to our sign vendor who was sign design, asked them to propose the signage as was suggested on that 128 facing side 
of the building at 55 Walker's Brook. Um, they did some site reconnaissance and essentially said, it's not really going to be visible there. You're going to be wasting your money. So we'd like to um, reconsider the variance criteria. We've done a little more digging and thought, up, uh, thought of some, some things that have impacted us since we've not been able to put this sign there. So if, if it's OK, I'd like to read the, the criteria. Yes, I do. So, first criteria, describe the circumstances relating to the soil condition, shape of to topography, which essentially affect the land or structures in question, but which do not generally affect the zoning district in which the land or structure is located that would substantiate the granting of a variance. The mature landscaping along the entrance to the building limits the visibility to the building signage if it was installed on the second floor window line. As a tenant, we would not have the ability to remove the landscaping, and as an environmentally conscious firm, we would not present that as an option to building ownership. Our mission is to enhance and sustain the natural and built environments. At the same time, should the building owner attempt to do that, they would likely be hard-pressed to get approval from conservation because, as I understand it, the property is on the riverfront. Um, criteria two, describe how the literal enforcement of the provisions of the zoning ordinance relating to the circumstances essentially affecting, especially affecting the land or structure in question would involve substantial hardship, financial or otherwise, to the petitioner. Weston and Sampson is seeking a sign located along the second floor in order to clearly identify our corporate headquarters as seen from Walkersbrook Drive and Route 128. For the previous 30 years, our corporate headquarters was located on Centennial Drive in Peabody, Mass. We have committed to a sign company to install a sign, and we have already paid them $7,700, which is 50% of the money due. They have indicated that after site survey, placing a sign on the 128 facing side of the building would not be money well spent because the sign is not visible from the highway. Additionally, a sign on the front of the building is visible from 128 as well as, a, as upon approaching the building from the drive. The front facing provides exposure from both the highway and the road, while the 128 facing side is only visible from the highway when trees are not in bloom. The financial hardship lies in spending monies for a sign that does not ma maximize exposure and is not visible for a large portion of the year. Additionally, there is a value to having our name more visible as depicted by the front facing sign. Our corporate headquarters will be in Reading for at least 11 years, possibly 21 years based on our five year extensions. When we speak to clients about our new location and we describe it, they often say, oh, the old Keurig building. As a growing firm competing with nar large national firms like AECOM and CDM Smith, our presence with this visibility for the next two decades provides us with brand name recognition that can't be quantified. As the anchor tenant spending $1.3 million in rent each year, we want to be identified as the Weston and Sampson headquarters, not the old Keurig building. For a growing employee-owned firm, there is value in that recognition, and among the reasons we chose this building over 7 Edgewater in Wakefield, which is known as the AECOM building, and also over a building in Middleton that was $5 less per square foot in rent. Describe how desirable relief may be granted without substantial detriment to the public good. Desirable relief may be granted without substantial detriment to the public good by approving a sign as we have proposed with the same dimensions and positioned in the same location as the sign that was previously placed there, Keurig, without substantial detriment to the public good as demonstrated by it remaining in place despite lack of permitting. Our proposed sign will not block other buildings as it faces the parking lot and the water feature. Fourth criteria, describe how desirable relief may be granted without nullifying or substantially degrading from the intent or purpose of the zoning ordinance of the town of Reading. Due to the location of the site in the industrial zone, the size of the building, the proximity to Interstate Route uh, 95 and 128, and the nature of signage at surrounding businesses to include retail stores, car dealerships, and restaurants, relief may be granted without nullifying or derogating from the intent of the bylaw. Our sign, as proposed, would actually be more um, less conspicuous than most of the signs in the surrounding properties. Mr. Chairman, yes, point of clarification. Um, when we initially heard this, uh, I think there was only three members of the board sitting that night or here this evening. Um, 
that puts into question uh, where do we go from here because I'm not sure uh, Hillary was brand new she wouldn't have even been aware of it right uh, I don't know if Robert's been able to I, see I have viewed the uh, video yeah. of, of the meeting from June 5th and I would be able to then certify myself to his doing so uh, for the Mullen rule there and okay. being able to vote if needed <laughs> How, however yeah. um, we have to make the applicant aware of the fact that there would be only four members voting this evening and for variance you need all members voting if this was a full board you would be able to knock off one person and still be able to get relief if the variance were granted so the point of clarification is where do we stand with this where do we want to go or where do you want to go as chair well and where does the applicant and right. its representative really want to go yeah uh, there's another aspect of that too and that is what you just read to us and is we have seen for the first time this evening and okay. you're looking for kind of an on-the-spot digesting right. of the data that you presented that's kind of a secondary point the main point is what John just alluded to okay. all the people who were here to listen to case initially are not all here Granted, this gentleman has watched the video, okay. and so that puts him in a position where he can he can act. But that leaves us with only four people. And to get a variance, you need all four in the affirmative. Okay, I understand. So it leaves you with some options. Okay. I mean, we can sit here and discuss it, open it up to the public, or you can say, okay, I'd, I'd, I'd rather have a better shot at can I hear the discussion and then make the decision? Excuse me? I can hear the discussion and then make the decision whether to continue or vote or no. That's a choice you have, okay? You can do that and you can decide after that okay. uh, if you want to continue a later date or ask uh, yeah. for a vote. But if we vote and turn it down, it's turned down for quite a while. Right. So that's a two-year Okay. Yeah. So, so I, I would certainly be interested to hear the concerns of the board so that I can, if we choose to continue, I can bring that back to my staff, my senior leadership, and say, here's what's happening, what's next. Okay. Uh, we can do that. Uh, as I say, we both are looking at this and listening to it for the first time, so we're kind of... No, I, I understand. In terms of responding to you, okay? No, I, I understand. I've been, some of the staff here have probably heard from me. I've been trying to do Basically, some research. Basically, the only difference between what, what was presented initially and what you're talking about now is you've, you've tried to amplify on the variance criteria and try to clarify it a little more. Right. And so the question becomes whether or not it's still an issue or a concern, okay? No, I, I understand. And, you know, I'm not opposed to continuing down that road. Mm -hmm. Any other thoughts on the part of the board members here? I think that's not a smart thing to do. It's your call. Okay? So, if you want to do that, we'll discuss it amongst the board. We'll get a building inspector input. We'll get into the public opinion input, and then we'll go from there. Okay. So, just so I'm clear, that can happen. Then, at that point, I can say, please continue. Yes, you can. Okay. Nick, we'll start with you. Sure. Thank you. Well, uh, I'll reserve my final comments so I hear what the rest of the board says, but um, just seeing what I have in front of us, I don't have anything bad to say. It didn't really come to light that it was an issue. But that said, going through the variance criteria, I do struggle on how you particularly meet a few of them. Um, and then I think about, you know, how every city in town has a, some type of sign review committee. And as a big company as yourself, I would think that maybe some due diligence would have been done, you know, have a P P PSR person still contingent on something or just, just some type of research ahead of time where you knew you were, what you were going to get into. And I know that you were maybe either misled or, or understanding that you were going to get that sign. And I do keep that in mind, but I also think that doesn't really, shouldn't really apply to the variance criteria as well. Um, so really, honestly, I think I'm still where I was at the last meeting on how I feel about this. Bob? 
Okay. Uh, now, after hearing the uh, arguments tonight, I did view the video of the last meeting. I was absent at that. But uh, I will be able to sign a certificate mm -hmm. there at the end of this meeting that mm -hmm. we can go to the moment rule on that. Uh, I do not see that this request is something that is, uh, as Nick says, detrimental to the area at all. Uh, it, it's most likely just by the nature of the name of the firm, it's going to be larger than what was out there with the Keurig sign. And what was out there even before, I think, uh, Keurig was there, which was what? Uh, I think it was Trask or something? Task. Task. Analytical Science ah, Corporation. Okay. Uh, so it's going to be a little larger along the fill. Now, is this, uh, this is going to be a lit sign or? Yeah, so it would be track aluminum letters. I think there's, I have to look at the size, but it would be lit from behind, but only during the times that would be allowed. Okay, back lit, and it, it will be on a timer that uh, it will not be going 24 7. Correct. Right. Okay, yeah. Okay, that's, you know, pretty much my thoughts on it. John? Um. I have it. Oh, you have it? Yeah. Um, well, there's, um, I guess I'll say a couple of facts first. I mentioned before, um, and what we know is that the two previous occupants of that, that structure that uh, are in the building um, both had signs in approximately the same area. Um, you're asking for a sign in similar size. Um, I think the discussion has come up before uh, when you first came in that there probably would be a timer set on it so that uh, it would close down at a reasonable hour in the evening and not be relit until morning traffic. Um, there was a question of whether um, Shurik was given permission uh, to uh, by CPDC to have that sign there. However, no action was taken during the time Shurik had the sign there. Um, so we're in a little bit of a predicament here that we're going to say to another applicant of the property that you can't have the same sign. Um, I think you mentioned before you now occupy the about three floors of the building. So we occupy all the office space on the first floor. There's common space, the entire second floor, and 6,000 square feet on the third floor. Okay, I'm sorry, the bottom three floors. Bottom heavy. However, you're the principal occupant of the, of the building. Um, it would seem to be a, re a little ridiculous to, not, to deny an occupant of that square footage uh, signage on the building that they occupy which is just contra to the whole signage aspect of it. You do have a directory out front. The directory is, the way I look at a directory, is very much like a Burger King. When you go in and you read the menu, that's what you have to choose from. When you go into that area, if there's other people beside Weston and Sampson in there, you have to know who's there and where to go. So that is very much a similar type of thing. It wasn't counted in the signage in, in other retail or commercial or industrial sites. So why are we making a big to-do about that? Um, I think Weston is a first-class occupant that would do uh, Reading no harm but good. Um, having that sign up there is not a major issue um, to me. Uh, it is in terms of the bylaws that we have created or that CPDC has created, and I don't think it has really taken into effect um, industrial 
sites as well as commercial and retail sites. Um, so to me, the, the criteria um, for a variance is a little bit, we've struggled in the past with all variances. Uh, it's very difficult to get a variance past the board, or through the board, I should say. Um, I think in most cases, uh, variants are given for realistic justification. Um, the board has also in the past um, given variances where maybe it was questionable, but it never gets challenged, so it goes through. In a case like this, I would worry about just the opposite. If we say that the particular criteria are necessary to create the variance, uh, are we creating uh, uh, litigation down the road that's going to be just the opposite? I mean, is this uh, restrictive of people occupying such an industrial site as it is right now? That's my concerns. That's the way I feel about it, but I can't tell you how to vote. <laughs> I know we're throwing you to the, mm -hmm. the fire. Hillary's brand new to the board, and uh, so I, uh, I, I'm not going to put her on the spot and ask her to, to comment on it unless she chose to do so. so. Okay. Uh, I've got mixed emotions about this one. Uh, in terms of satisfying the criteria for a variance, I think on a couple of them it's, it's, it's still a weak argument. It's tough. Looking at it from the standpoint of, of, of the situation as you see it, eyeballing it in a common sense way, I kind of would express comments similar to John. I, 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 I don't think it's really harmful or detrimental to the, to the neighborhood. I think it's a great use of that building by a very, very sound, established company. Uh, but again, we're challenged between doing what we are leaning to what might be a good thing to do vis-a-vis -vis adhering to the criteria for a variance, which are very, very, very stringent, okay? So it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a tough one to decide. Uh, but I'm going to stop there for the moment, and I would just, I know that Keirig was there before, and they had a sign up in that spot. But from what we know, there was never a formal approval of that sign that we can find, okay? I know that the Analytical Sciences Corporation, which I think went into that building back around the mid-80s, I think like 85 or 86, and I don't know that there was, is there any record anywhere that you can find, uh, Mark or Andrew, that says that they got approval yes. of such a sign? I believe Kim has that documentation of the permit that was issued for that sign. But that was in accord with the bylaws that existed at that time, and are the bylaws at that time still are the same vis-a-vis -vis signs as they are today? Okay, I don't know. This was August 3rd, 1987, where they got a inspect well, this is Town of Reading Department of Inspection of Buildings ap approving the signage. So there is documentation to the effect that they did have some kind of an approval. Comment, Mark? I was just waiting for you to call on me, sir. I just called on <laughs> you. <laughs> So just for points of order, if I could just make a couple of uh, statements before we get to that, that okay. permit from 1987. Um, first, just I'm not trying to sway the board either way. This is just for informational purposes so everybody's on the same page. The proposed sign is 44 square feet bigger than um, the existing sign from 1987. Nobody knows the square footage of the Couric sign because there was no paperwork on the Couric sign. So this is it, 44 square feet bigger than the old uh, TASC sign. 
Um, another point of clarification, we're not denying the sign based on the square footage and Weston and Sampson. It's based on the location on the building. Correct. There are other opportunities to put that signage on the building. So we're just basing it on their proposed location at this time. Correct. And then the third point was, you guys beat me to the trump card, was 1987 there was a permit issued um, to TSAC uh, for an 87 square foot sign. The only thing that's a little drawback is it says it's facing 128. So it's this sign in particular, whether it was approved for the 128 side and it ended up on the the um, the Walker's Brook side, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows. But um, so one time there was approval for a, sign, a wall sign up there, um, and it was at that height because it says the top facade. So just more information to um, play with. Any other, any other comments from the board before I open it up to the public? Uh, so the other, the previous two signs in the building, Mark, uh, was it? What was it at? T A S C. Yeah, T S A C. That yeah. was was that on the Walker's Brook side? Well, or was it the one twenty eight well, side? So for clarification, it used to be called 55 John Street. That's why we had a hard time finding a permit before it became 55 Walkers Brook. Okay. It, it says it's facing 128. Okay. So we, your guess is good as mine. I can't. You know where it. where it you know where it was installed. Where, where was okay? Then the next question is where was the Keurig sign? Was that facing? Walker's that was Brook. facing the, the Walker's Brook as Weston Sampson is proposing. Weston Sampson is. Right. In approximately the same location yes. that Weston Sampson is proposing it? Approximately yes. the same. My, okay. me my memory of the task side was that it faced Walker Brook. Which could that's be true. I wasn't strictly, around. That strictly, I right. can't prove it. Yeah. Okay. Right. Well, I mean, but I do remember it. Right. When I they did this application, they might have said face 128 and then decided at the last minute, you know, it's better on this side, and nobody was. Yeah. But I know I remember visiting Task many times as we did business with them, and I, I mean, I have a vivid picture of it on the mm -hmm. Brook side. I concur with your sign. I remember. Huh? That. I concur with you. Okay. So and he was he was facing Walker's Brook. Brook. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Pretty sure. That's some logic. It's actually a logical place to put it. To be honest with you, it really is. Okay. And I did have one question for Mark. Um, right now, the difference between where that wall sign can be hung um, on the building is um, four stories above. <laughs> Um, above the um, Lewis. the second the second, second story, story ceiling, ceiling or whatever the you want to call that, um, which uh, if you're if you if you were in any you were major major um, business in the in the that size structure in that size building um, who's going to see it. From uh, that location, uh, because you've got the the water, uh, you've got the entrance, you've got the directory, you'd never be able to see it from Walker's Brook. So, it's, to me, again, the difference between our bylaws today and the dark bylaws back in 1987 was realistically signage. Today is just. I have no idea what, well, you know I'm a real fan of signage. Um, but but this, this, this signage, signage needs to go with the business. Signage does not need to be in black and white. You can't move from black and white. But th that's, that's just me. But that's the, that's the big difference between what's been asking for now and what the bylaws have allowed versus what you're asking for to put it up on the top of the building wall. Underneath these, the um, roof, roof of the building. Before I open it up to public input, I just have one other comment, and that is the signage that's proposed by 
your company. Does it comply? Just rear it for the, for the audience. Does it comply with the signage dimensions that are currently in the model? So I haven't myself reviewed that, but I have relied on the side company to do that, and they presented it as if it was an PUD. So I presume so, but I would have to certainly check that, and we certainly would comply with all the rules and regulations. Can you answer that question, Mark? Or? Um, respectfully, no, because I sort of got lost in the shuffle from when the application first came in okay. um, till now. But if I recall, off the top of my head, when I first reviewed the application, the square footage wasn't the issue, it yeah. was the location. Right, right, yeah. Are you nodding that it, yes, it does? Yes, I believe it complies with the area um, of for a wall based side. on their facade, yes. Okay. Right. I'm going to uh, open it up for public comment at the moment. Uh, is there anyone who would like to speak on this issue? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Tony DeRezzo, 130 John Street. Uh, my first question is, is this a continuation of the prior, or is this a brand new? This is a continuation of okay. this I thought case. the applicant had uh, withdrawn without prejudice the last Not on this one. No, no. Okay. No. All right. So let us go start with uh, this is a tenant and not the building owner. So right. that's a problem number one. As the tenant themselves pointed out, they don't have the authority to take down any trees or anything on the property, yet they're claiming that, well, it's a hardship for them for not having a sign. If they don't own the building, really, can you grant them a variance? That variance goes with the building, exists forever. If the tenant leaves after 11 years or 21 years, that building still has this variance. Mm -hmm. So the hardship should go with the building, not with the tenant. As for uh, nobody complaining about the Keurig sign, I complained. The problem was I didn't push it. Had I known this would be an issue, I definitely would have pushed it harder, but I understood that the town had a history of not being friendly to business. I certainly didn't want to uh, create any waves that I didn't have to. Uh, also, there was the issue of whether the current would be leaving or staying. But yes, I did complain about it to uh, the town. Also, this is not a PUDI site. It may meet the requirements of a PUDI, PUDI, but a PUDI requires a special permit from the zoning board of, uh, not from the zoning board, the CBDC, and therefore that permit has never been requested. They must go under the industrial, which is what it's zoned for. Um, the owner hardship should be the owner. The um, directory is not part of the issue. The question is whether they should have a sign. The curb sign has been down for over two years, so the building has come back into compliance with zoning, and therefore using the, the pre-existing current curb sign should not be a factor in this case. Um, the only reason for even allowing a sign at that height is because it's within 1,800 feet of an interstate highway. That's what the bylaw says. The bylaw points it toward the highway so it can't be seen by any residences, uh, such as myself, who can see the sign at night from my kitchen. Current winter. Now they could put it up. The reconnaissance was currently that they couldn't be seen because of the foliage from the highway. However, that's only for six months out of the year. For the other months, it should be visible. You say in the sign that the sign if they were to put it towards the highway where the bylaw says it should go. Right. So, and overall, I don't think they really qualify for a variance for this sign. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public input? And then I'll close that portion of the session. Is uh, there any other comment from the board? And I guess I I go back to you. You have some options here. There's so certainly some issues that are outstanding. Uh, we only have we only have four people here, uh, and uh, if we were to vote on this issue tonight, you would require all four unanimously. And I think you're you can hear that there's perhaps some sympathy to what you're looking for, but there's still some concerns. So you have the option of 
going to vote or you have the option of continuing it until we have a full board present. Is the full board that. five people or six people? Board, is the board five, five or board, six? Five voters. Okay, so is Ms. Mateen not five. a voting member right now? Right. Hillary was not present at the previous meeting. And she was not a member at the She was not even a member oh, at that time. okay, okay. So she's not eligible to vote on this at all. Okay. So you are looking at four people. I think we'll continue. Now, I don't know. Let's see. We already have how many cases for the next meeting? You do have three cases for the 18th, technically four with Green Street being two separate applications. Well, I think we're pretty cool for that one. The next one is October 4th, I believe. Sorry. October 9th. We can continue with October 9th. Sure. Yes. One more information, Mr. Chairman. How would that work if one of the meeting members is not here tonight? They can do, they can watch the video. Okay. Which we'll ask them to do. Otherwise, we'll have never get there. They have to sign for that. And they have to sign for that as well. And it's kept in the records. Yeah. They have to prove they did. Yes. So, okay. The other issue uh, we need to do is to make sure on that that particular 9th of October that we have the five board make members. Make sure we have all five members there. And you have to survey right. the board. That would be Eric for that one. Correct. So we'd have to make sure that Eric was yeah, he's here. here for that one. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So I will entertain a, another motion to continue this case until October 8th? 9th. 9th. Right. October 9th. Motion to continue the subject matter of this hearing until the uh, 9th of October. Uh, location, uh, purpose of securing a fifth board member uh, for uh, any additional information that we, the applicant wishes to present. Um, for a con hopeful conclusion. Second. 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 All in favor? Do I vote on that one? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. 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 okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Last case on the agenda for this evening is 259 to 267 Main Street, case number 19 19. I'll read the legal notice. Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing in the Select Board meeting room at Town Hall, 16 Old Street in Reading, Massachusetts, on Wednesday, September 4, 7 p.m., on the application of Stonegate Construction Corporation. Pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 40A, Section 9, for a special permit under Reading Zoning Bylaw, Section 7.2, to alter non-conforming commercial use within the S-15 Zoning District, or pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 40A, Section 10, for a variance to convert a commercial use area within the S-15 zoning district into parking for a multifamily dwelling or pursuant to Reading Zoning Bylaw Section 4.6.2.4 for a determination that the special permit application can be decided as part of the Community Planning and Development Commission's site plan review process for the project on the property located at 259 to 267 Main Street in Reading, Massachusetts. Again, 
Unless there's an objection, I'll dispense with the reading of the voters list. I'd accept to say that they were notified as were the following again. Select Board, Police Department, Building Department, Health Department, Engineering Division, Town Clerk, Fire Department, Conservation Commission, Assessor's Office, CPDC, Members and Associate Members of the Zoning Board of Appeals, and the, as well as the Planning Boards of Wakefield, North Reading, Woburn, Linfield, Stoneham, and Wilmington. Testimony given before this board is taken under oath. So if you think you may want to speak, please stand and raise your hand. I swear the testimony given by me before this board will be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Okay. Attorney Latham, welcome back again. <laughs> Good so evening. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Attorney Josh Latham here tonight on behalf of Stonegate Construction, the applicant in this case. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may approach the board with just a summary of my arguments, as well as some exhibits that I'm okay. submitting this evening. Thank you very much. I know it looks weighty. It's mostly just um, aerial photographs and really summarizing what I will be Thank speaking you. to this evening. Can we have another one? Oh, sorry. Please, Brandon. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. So to begin this evening, uh, this relates to the property at 259, 267 Main Street. You may recall this property historically has been the Smith Oil property going back to many, many uh, generations and decades. The reason we're here this evening is that the matriarch of the family has passed away. The heirs are now in a position to sell the property. Uh, the applicant tonight is a potential purchaser. They're under contract to acquire this property, and the intent is to redevelop it as 24 residential apartments. As you can see, the property is zoned A40. It has been since mid-1960s. The problem is that district is 150 feet from the center line of Main Street. It's a very narrow corridor that the zoning allows. The rest of the property to the rear is S15 district. And there's a small sliver here, which is business A. So if you look at it, it's got a really interesting overlay of, of multiple zoning districts. The property is located southern Main Street. Here to the south, we have the Belmont Arms Condominium. Here to the north, we have Companion Pets. Here we have Avon House Condominium. And here we have the site, it's called uh, Oli Coley. It's a physical therapy. It used to be an e-car um, facility. Right. So the existing conditions, the property is about 189,000 square feet, so a little, a good amount over four acres. It's been this same lot configuration since about 1948. That's when the Smith family acquired this property. The Smiths are the grandparents to the current owners. So it's been within the same family that entire time. It's been used for an oil service company that entire time. The zoning for it, if you go back, it's been uh, S15, the precursor to that was A1, going back way to the 1950s. Uh, for a period, it was then transferred to what was called B1. Uh, and that B1 use allowed for multifamily under a different guise. It wasn't apartment buildings, it was considered more than two families. The current iteration again goes to about the 1960s when this A40 district was configured. The proposal that they have is to develop this front portion entirely within the A40 district for this structure. And this is essentially what they've already constructed in other locations. They're a quality builder, and they're used to doing this type of a project. They can fit everything very well within this area. But the problem is that we have zoning overlays, wetland restrictions, shape and topography of this lot. When it all mixes in together, it results in some very difficult situation. You can't get enough of the parking in this A40 area. So the reason we're here tonight under alternative <coughs> theories of relief is number one, requesting a variance. The reason for the variance, I will go through those conditions shortly. But the general idea of it is because of all of those reasons, we just can't fit the parking within this front A40 portion. The alternative relief that we're seeking is a special permit under 7.2. 
Historically, and I've submitted several aerial photographs, and if you look at Exhibit 1, you're going to find about 10 of them dating to 1938, all the way up until the present, showing the historical use of the commercial area for oil delivery vehicles, service vans, open storage, all happening within this area of the S-15 district. So historically, it's been used for this reason. What we're seeking as a special permit is to allow a change of that use to use it now for a more restrictive purpose, a residential parking use. So it's actually a, a better use, it's more consistent with an S-15 district than commercial open storage and, and heavy equipment parking. The third relief, which is really just kind of our last catch-all, if the board doesn't find that they can grant those other two reliefs, there is the special provision in the zoning that allows that the CPDC can grant special permits in limited conditions. I'm not entirely sure that applies here. But I'm bringing it up simply because we have to go forward with site plan review and we have to go forward with CONSCOM for an order of conditions if you grant us relief this evening. This is our threshold question. The buyer is moving forward based on whether they can do this parking aspect. Everything else of this project complies fully with zoning. This is the only piece that requires some level of zoning relief. If they receive a favorable review from the board, they are prepared to go full force with site plan review, DRT, and have a full review and vetting of this project for all drainage and traffic and design and everything. We've already met with the town a couple of times, gotten some very good input. We also, because of the wetlands, will have to get an order of conditions. So this will be very well vetted if you choose to grant this relief this evening. If you don't choose to grant the relief, which is obviously your choice, the project is probably dead. This is a key aspect of the project. Without this parking, the buyer is likely not interested in proceeding with this project. So to that point, if I can proceed with uh, the various requests for relief. With regards to the variance request, going to the question of uniqueness of this property, why don't I start with the size? It's over 189,000 square feet. It is the largest privately owned piece of land along all of Southern Main Street, south of the town center. It's a very large piece of land, but that's deceptive. There are significant wetlands that crisscross this property, including a stream, a perennial stream, that runs through the site. As a result of the wetlands, it substantially reduces the actual buildable, usable portion of the site. If you look at the lot shape, it's somewhat unusual here. We have A40 district in the most narrow part of the property. It expands greatly when you, when you come back in depth away from Main Street, creating this enormous S15 area, which is unusable. So as a result, when you overlay the wetlands with the lot shape, um, what you really get is a very small spot that you can actually develop for the A4 use. Then when you overlay the actual legal requirements, what, what the town requires for zoning for an A40 district, it becomes very difficult to do anything within the size of this area. There are requirements that say for an A40, parking has to be behind the building. There's a section that says parking cannot be on the sides. There's a parking that requires 25% of the A40 district be landscaped. All of these various requirements say, sure, we zoned it for A40, but you can't actually use it for A40. That's a perfect condition where you would say that this is very unique and there's a hardship under zoning. The third argument is regards to not substantially derogating or, or nullifying the intent of zoning. Well, what I will pose to you is the Avon House condominiums built in about 1969. They didn't receive any zoning relief. If you look at exhibit four of what I've submitted to you tonight, they have approximately 49 parking spaces in the S15 <coughs> district right here. All of that parking is very close to the immediately adjacent residential home. If you look at the Belmont Arms condominium property, they have approximately 20 to 30 parking spaces. They are zoned for A40, but they immediately abut residential homes. The difference for our property is we have this massive green zone buffer. So even if we use this very small spot that has historically been used for commercial parking and storage and we make it residential parking, there will remain over 200 feet 
of green natural space. It would have no negative impact on the residential homes, and there are five of them here. It would have no impact on them. It would actually be consistent. It would actually be the most limited use for multifamily uses within the four lots that go along this, this area of Main Street. So when you consider all the parking that's been allowed here, and I actually list about 15 properties along Southern Main Street that use S15 for parking accessory to business and multifamily use. And that's all right within the packet I submitted. So I would post to you that using this very limited reason, residential parking, would not substantially derogate from the intent of zoning. This is exactly where a variance would be appropriate. This would be an improvement of the property. It's a tired, old property. It's an eyesore. This is a perfect opportunity to develop it, to beautify Southern Main Street, and it's consistent with the existing uses. Beyond the variance argument, we then can talk about a special permit. Section 7.2 says we can change or extend an existing non-conforming use if you find that it doesn't substantially derogate from what zoning allows for this area. I won't reiterate all those same arguments. What I will say is the aerial photographs really do establish this long history of use of this area. There may be a slight extension of upland here from what we show on the plans, but you still have that right to extend the use, which is a very limited extension, to allow us to convert from a very non-conforming use, commercial, to a very reasonable, limited use, residential parking. I would argue that's a perfect condition to grant a special permit. Those are really the two primary arguments we have. Uh, Mr. Pesnola, the engineer, is also here tonight. If you have any questions for him at all, he's also available to speak to those terms. Um, but with that, do you want to make uh, any initial comments or simply answer questions? I'm here to answer any questions with Great. regards to the, the project itself. Great. With that, if I can answer any questions for the board. Thank you. Well, before we get to that, uh, Mark, do you have any input on this case at this point in the process? I do not at this time. Andrew might be the one to have. Mm -hmm. Andrew might be the one. Yes. How about you, Andrew? I do not. Uh, Josh met with Julie Mercy, our community development director, to review these options, and she has found the same history that Josh has put together. Um, so they both agreed on going forward with CBA first to make this determination, and we will get more detail on their site plan review in the planning department. So. Uh, then I'll start with the board members. Uh, <laughs> John, I'll start with you. Um, you've got all the permits you want to go ahead. Now tell me, or list for me, all the relief that you need. The relief that we require to be able to develop this project? As you presented here, exactly what is it that you need? This reminds me of, you know, putting the... We the, go through uh, this every time with CPD. I so know. Who goes first? But, but, but I, the variance aspect of it really kicks me uh, only because once, once the board guarantee, you know, votes positively on a variance, it stays forever. It doesn't make any di difference what happens down the road. So to do this before you even start the project is kind of backwards. So that's why I'm asking, what is it you really need uh, to get to this point? Um, I mean, I'm sure that we could seek town council's uh, wisdom in how to present this, but to me, whether it's a special permit, which is a lot easier than the variance aspect of it, what is it that you need? What hurdles do you have to get over to get to that point if that's what you are going to build? Certainly. Thank you very much. Uh, to answer your question, really what we're seeking, it's purely a use, special permit or a no, use. No, 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 no. I know what you're seeking. Sorry. My question sure. is, what else do you need yeah. beyond, beyond that. this? Sure. All we need after, if you grant either one of those zoning reliefs, we need site plan review and we need an order of conditions from the Conservation Commission. Yeah. 
really the reason that we decided it made sense to go forward here is because this is a threshold question. We could spend tens plus thousands of dollars in planning an entire project and have this decision be the reason that it has to stop. So this is that threshold question. If we're not allowed to do this one piece of it, we don't want to invest all of that additional time and money and efficiency with the town staff if this is something that the board's not, not really interested in granting. But again, it's just site plan review, order of conditions. This is a lawful as of right use of the A40 section. It's simply this parking space, these parking spaces that requires us to be here tonight. Does, it, does that answer your question? It's, that's the beginning. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Now I would ask Andrew, what is it, let's take one thing at a time. Uh, what comes first, order of conditions? They generally run at the same time, but typically we would like an applicant to close with conservation bef and get their input before finalizing the site plan review, but they do run concurrently. So if we're uh, applying for that, we're talking about going after an override to get the site um, and where we're going from that point so that we can provide that to conservation. At the same time, you're going to give it the site plan with CPDC. But now, before you can go to CPDC, you have to know where, what conservation is going to do, because conservation could shoot it down, which Josh said is, is a major issue on this property. How long would it take, in your estimation, Andrew, that I'm going to ask you, how long would it take to go through conservation for order of conditions. Now be generous because I know. <laughs> I can't give you an exact answer, but I would imagine more than one meeting. Um, there will be remediation. I've, they've been in contact with our conservation administrator and he's well aware of the project and moving forward with it. Um, he seems to be in a good position to take control and review the project and is happy with the discussions he's had with the applicants, they might be able to provide further input on what those conversations were, I'm not sure, but. No, no, certainly. <laughs> Again, for the record, Joe Pesnola from Hancock Associates. Um, we've done quite a bit of due diligence here. We've, we've done survey, uh, we've done geotechnical exploration, the, you know, this, this applicant is not just asking you know laying it at the feet of the zoning board we're just trying to sequence things in the in the the biggest questions first um, so we did do the survey we did map the wetlands we did file an abbreviated notice of resource delineation with the with the conservation commission and received an ORAD uh, we did do geotechnical and environmental explorations on the site to make sure that those issues were uh, surmountable uh, we did also meet with planning staff to talk about the project and um, and uh, sit down and explain you know the vision of that project, and most importantly, we met with the in, with the conservation commission themselves to say, okay, here's a site that is tired. It it, it has been uh, used as a commercial site. It maybe hasn't respected the wetlands as much as it, it should have over the many many years. And our, our point was, we have this project and we will be in, in close proximity to the wetlands. We'll, we'll have some wetland impact. And we wanted to make sure that the Conservation Commission was comfortable with the project, with the impacts, in exchange for some significant remediation and, and enhancement of these uh, wetland areas and riverfront areas that were um, misused over, over, over the years. Um, we walk, our wetland scientists walk the site with uh, with the the agent as well as the the chairperson, um, and at that meeting I can report to you that the conservation commission gave us uh, obviously they weren't approving the project because we haven't given them the, the thumbs up but they did give us a very good comfortable feeling that this site was one that um, that they saw great opportunities not only for some remediations and some riverfront enhancement, but possibly even some uh, opportunities for uh, interconnectivity 
uh, between some of the other open space sites in, in providing a pedestrian corridor. There is a, a sewer easement across the back of the property that could be dual used as a pedestrian a pedestrian corridor and a municipal sewer um, sewer easement. So we got um, we we got good feeling from them that that we were gonna that that they were gonna work with us through the process. We have to do the engineering. We have to do the stormwater. We have to do all of that and present a full um, application to both the Conservation Commission and and CPDC to move through that process. But this question, is, as, as as Attorney Latham said, is kind of a threshold um, issue. It's it's not it's not related to the bulk of the project. It's related to a piece of the project. Um, we have um, we're pr proposing parking under. Um, but that's not sufficient to, to, to meet the needs of the, the project, which is this, the, which necessitates this kind of parking lot in the back um, to supplement that parking. Um, and uh, that's, that's why we're here. So a substantial amount of uh, work has been done up to this point before you came before and filed before ZBA. Yes. Um, so would you estimate that you spent like three months on it, four months on it? Four, four months. Yeah. Um, so we're probably talking at least another three months uh, to go through CONCOM. Yeah, we, we need some time to put the, you know, the, the design together and the stormwater design and, yeah. and all of that. But the, the building is, is designed because it is a, a kind of a prototype of, of this of, of Mr. Finnegan and Mr. Cates, the developers, um, and you know they've, it's a proven product that they've been building for for many many years. I mean, I've been their engineer for many many years, and um, and they they do do uh, quality work. This is right right in their wheelhouse as far as the type of product that they like to deliver um, to the communities that they work in. So. Um, it's not speculative at all, and it, we're just, again, trying to sequence the, the approvals in the, the most logical sense that, that kind of knocks them off, biggest, uh, biggest turtles down, um, if you will. Okay. Um, I'll come back to you. <laughs> um, CPDC and site plan is really going to pick up as we get closer to um, a positive review from CONCOM. So if we're looking at that three months, roughly three months down the road, uh, we're talking about pretty much the first of the year uh, before CPDC tackles it or they are going to be working with CONCOM. Uh, how, how is that going to lay out from the planning side? It would be up to the applicant when they submit their application to site plan review. Could be before conservation, during, or after. It's really when they would submit their application and felt comfortable enough to move forward with the site plan review. So, CPDC is... Based on our preliminary meetings with conservation, we're comfortable to, s to submit that simultaneous. And as Andrew said, you know, CPDC might delay decision until they get kind of the thumbs up from conservation that they're going to issue an order. But we would think that because they're simultaneous, they'll fall pretty, pretty quickly in succession. Okay. I'm just trying to get a, 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 a complete picture of what this is going to look like because you're, you are asking a board. Um, for either the special permit or the variance, and the variance is, is more restricted because of the time issue once the board grants the variance. I mean, that's tough unless town council can give us a, a back door. Well, a special permit is a lot easier because it can be restricted um, on how it can be used. So that's the only comments that I have right now. Bob? Uh, a question uh, to uh, the applicant is that area that you propose to use for parking, is that used 
today is that an open area that uh, Smith Oil used as part of his lot? That's correct. There are no longer oil trucks being stored on the site, but they still have service vans and um, equipment and storage out there. Right. I did see an oil truck down back there and stuff. I, I did not go down back myself to take a look, but uh, but that area, it's a, what is it, 11 cars? You're looking for an 11 car parking lot with a loading zone yes. uh, there. Right. That area is being used today for vehicles or commercial use. Correct. It has, and if you look at the aerial maps, you can see historically it's been used for yeah. over 50 years. Um, I mean, those maps are really pretty good, those, those photos, because they do show some significant commercial vehicles, other storage out in that area. Mm -hmm. It is open. A lot of that is open. There's a small portion that is wooded and that we would, is upland, that we would propose to use. That's the extension portion of the special permit road questing. Um, and I guess another way to look at it, instead of saying that we're requesting 12 parking spaces and a loading space, it's really more the right to use a defined area for parking, residential parking, accessory to multifamily use on the A40 district that we have on site. Um, that essentially is really what we're seeking tonight. Yeah, yeah. It, it, that's what I, that was another thing I was going to ask, if you could go over it. I, I was a bit confused reading it, and when I checked the bylaws, exactly how a special permit could be, uh, you might say, applied for in this case. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you could uh, expound on that? Oh, certainly. So, yeah. Section 7.2, the exact language, it really speaks to terms of single, uh, one and two families, and then it says, and other uses. So really, those other situations would be this type of a situation. And that's um, exactly and that's what I was looking at under 7-2. Yeah. And that's exactly what I saw was single and family single and then two family. And then what I've quoted um, within my language is it's that second part. So it talks to the one and two family, and then it says where other nonconforming uses are changed and substi <coughs> or substantially extended, the use may be reconstructed or also <coughs> extended or structurally changed only if the ZBA determines that such Reconstruction, alteration, mm -hmm. extension, or change shall not be substantially more detrimental. Yeah, it, it, well, that, 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 was, that was one of the things I'm, I'm feeling a bit uh, uncomfortable with, you might say, is uh, under 7.2, a special permit. To me, that's, that seems to pertain to single and two-family residential units. Uh, and located in business and industrial districts. Other non-conforming may be extended by determination from the building inspector. Now, it throws the building inspector under the bus there. Right. Uh, the, such the, extensions are not substantial. So, so maybe, that's the second paragraph of that section. Okay. But I, that's what I mean. Other non-conforming uses and this may be extended right. on the determination from the building inspector that such extensions are not substantial. The non-conforming uses a single R is increased to where other non-conforming uses are changed or where other non-conforming uses are changed or substantially ex extended, the use may be reconstructed, altered, and it's not more detrimental to the existing non-conforming use, more, more detrimental than the existing non-conforming use to the neighborhood. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I would relate it back it, it's, to... Yeah, it, it, and the other thing is, it, it's, the, you know, it's it's not all one zoning district, so it, it's it's very difficult uh, on that. And that's part of the complication yeah. of the site. Right. I would relate, relate it back to the old zoning when it used to say you could do a special permit to do something more conforming. More conforming. Yeah. That's what I equate this section of the bylaws to. It was a section that we used on the yeah, Pierce Street yeah. organ factory. You know, essentially it was a special permit to say this conforming, I mean, this commercial use is non conforming. This multifamily residential, it's still non conforming, but it's sure a lot better. It's more conforming than the commercial. And that's what the bylaw used to very explicitly say. Yeah. This is the section that I see as replacing that. Yeah. Uh, you know, over, overall, to be honest, I, I don't have an issue. Because the way I'm looking at it, the only issue is building a parking lot in an S15 district, which to me, you're not building a structure at all. It, it's, uh, 
I don't, I don't know if we even have a restriction that you can't build a parking area in an S-15 district. Why can't you? I would actually posit to you that if you look at the Avon House condominiums, where they have 49 parking yeah. spaces in the S-15 district, they didn't get any zoning relief. That's I've searched the Registry of Deeds and the town records. There's nothing. That, 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 that's, I don't know, I would put that to the board. That's one thing I'm questioning. Why, why can't you build a paved parking area in an S-15 district without any any above-ground structure or below-ground structure. It's just a paved area. Well, it's not, it's not in the table of permitted uses for the S-15 zone. But it's also not in the table of permitted uses for the A-40 district either. It's, it's not anywhere <laughs> yeah. as a use. It's not listed. I know, anywhere. but I know right now we're dealing with S-15. <laughs> <laughs> I, I agree. It's not in the table of uses for that for the a15 therefore it's not but, but specifically you look at it and you say well a paved driveway is not in the specific uses for an s15 it just says you can build a house you can do this you can do that everybody assumes yes you need a driveway it can be paved is there any restrictions to how big a driveway can be in an S-15? I don't think so. Is but you it? can associate a driveway and parking yeah. spaces with a single-family home as accessory, ancillary to that home. <laughs> this is a this is a different parking yeah. area mm. that is accessory to something else. Right. If I can add, I did speak with Julie pretty at length about this. She did a lot of research, and I did a lot of research. What it came down to is, as Mark said, it's not an actual use listed anywhere in our zoning. Parking does not stand alone as an accessory or a principal use. However, in abundance of caution for the, the level of investment that my, my client will be making in the property, not wanting to set a precedent um, with potential redevelopment in town, the thought was, look, you know, the town's treated this differently over the years. I submitted a bunch of zoning decisions to you that applied to some of those other properties, but others didn't get any zoning relief. In abundance of caution, we thought, let's go forward yeah. with regards to a special permit or a variance, if that's the better way to go. No, I, I, I can see, and you know, I see you back up there, and I'm sure we have along Main Street there and backs of buildings. Many parking areas are paved areas have yeah. extended into the S15 zone beyond the 150 foot mark. Uh, if you went along Main Street, uh, well, that uh, actually submit ten that yeah. are listed here, um, and that's just from going on to the town GIS site, doing the overlay with the zoning on the aerial map, and then just looking at it and counting one, two, three, four. And, and, and I, I don't have a zoning map in front of me. One that jumps out to me is now is. You, you may be more familiar now. Is this 150 foot section marked to, or you could answer this, from the center line of Main Street to both sides of Main Street? Yes. It is, all the way up to the Stoneham line? Yeah, there's some deviations and some drop offs okay, and stuff like that, but in that stretch of area, yeah. it's 150 both sides of the center line. Now, one thing that jumps out to me, and only because I, I visited every so often, is Calarusso's. Mm -hmm. They built a new building. They're within, the building itself is within, I'm sure, that 150 foot zone. But their parking area extends quite a bit, quite a distance behind that building, I would suspect beyond 150 feet. That would be probably, most likely, S15 then behind that. That's correct. I don't know. But that, that's just one example I can think of now. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, it, it, it's, I, I would be much more comfortable, I think, if we need to do something to do a special permit mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to a variance. As John says, it goes with the property, though I think we could condition the heck out of it. I don't know why we couldn't put a condition on saying that the variance only extends as far as the multifamily housing is on the lot, period, and leave it at that. But well, I, th I think town, town council could lead us down something to say yeah. for both parties. Yeah, but, but that's let's cross that when we come to it. But that's just some, I think we could condition something maybe if we were concerned about that. Uh, but th that's what I'm kind of wrestling with now. I would much rather be doing a special permit, to be honest with you. I'd much rather give it all to CPDC and let them hash it out. <laughs> but 
Well, I mean, I can see where the applicant is going. Yeah. They want some. They want something. Something, and, and you know, I look at uh, your your ten sites that you picked out. Mm. Actually, only two of them, uh, the first two, are applicable because that's residential commercial. In terms of structures, uh, right. the others are more uh, business uh, related. Um, but I, I think, you know, in, in one, going way back into the, the 60s, <laughs> I, um, I wasn't around in the 60s. <laughs> okay, John. <laughs> I mean, the, the issue that, uh, as, we have, as we have migrated from the 50s and the 60s all the way up here to the 2000s and getting to the 2020s, um, has been more and more restrictive each time we, we look at something mm -hmm. and um, it doesn't give us an awful doesn't give anybody an awful lot of gray area to interpret what is best for the community uh, when you put these restrictions on it but um, you know as I said before I'm, I'm right, around, right along with uh, Robert here special uh, permit I think is much easier to work mm -hmm. with if we can figure a way uh, to do that. And I don't think we're going to be able to do that this evening, just in my mm. opinion. But I think it, it could be certainly addressed um, with with perhaps planning and maybe town council is to give us a guidance on that. But the variance aspect scares me. Mm -hmm. Because you don't know what's coming down the pike and you're trying to, even a planner, um, can you tell me what's going to happen? Five years, ten years, fifteen years. No, no, no. no I'll write my name down. At that. <laughs> I mean, that the fly would go along with with you, Robert, on that. Mm. Yeah, I can pretty much echo uh, what the other board members said. Um, I think this project is deserving of uh, zoning relief, whether it's a special permit or a variance. Which honestly, I think this has a pretty good chance of. You know, for me, it hits all the spots of being appropriate for a variance. Um, I think if it's in the neighborhood, it would be a good use for that property. Um, so I'm hoping we can find a way to get the applicant relief of some sort. Yeah, I, uh, I think that there's, as you can obviously see, a pretty standard or pretty complete support for what you are trying to do. The only question is, how can we best get to where you want to be? There's no love on this board for dealing with the variance if we can try to avoid going down that road. If it assists the board, you know, we, we claimed alternative relief simply to give options. Because um, I know that often appearing before you, you want to have options sometimes to deal with it creatively. So from our perspective, a special permit does exactly what we need it to do. We listed the variance just to make sure you had that as an opportunity if you felt like that was a better avenue. Uh, I'm not sure at this point we know exactly how we would structure a special permit. Okay. Mm -hmm. For the current bylaw. That's why I think we need some time. Okay. okay. I'm not sure how we could do that uh, without some input. Uh, I don't know how the town feels about trying to do that. I mean, I have no pro personally, I have no problem with the project. Mm -hmm. Okay. But a variance, as we all know, puts the feet in the concrete and it stays with the property forever and ever and ever. And we'd like to try to avoid that if we can and still see this project go. So I I, my, I guess one suggestion would be that we take a, a brief period of time to try to get council input as to how we might structure a permit uh, to get us to the next phase. May I request a brief recess to speak with my client? Sure. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. <coughs> yeah, I was going to say, um, I think we need to um, see what your concerns are or whatever because you're sitting here tonight. Yes, yes. It, it, the worst situation, I mean in your case, would be um, Eric can't come. 
So we're down to four members again. Yes. We have five sitting here tonight, and you are a member. Right. So yeah. no. and ask the questions that you, you think, or just clarifications if you yes. want to do that, too. And can I just say, like, if I agree with everybody, and I'm understanding those were the questions that I would have asked on some of them, but way beyond <laughs> what I th would have thought about to myself. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. When you talk about, I don't know if we can still talk about structure of a special permit, are you talking about like conditions relating to that special permit or just the wording uh, itself? I think it's com uh, the wording, but the, com the combination of conditions that could be imparted. And I think somebody like town council would be able to. Mm -hmm. This is not something that's going to be done overnight. Uh, there's going to be a lot of time spent on this, and I can't see it coming to fruition until probably early spring at the best. Mm -hmm. So, is the, there like a time period for the special permit too? Because didn't you last time have like a continuation? Mm -hmm. So if they go for that, like we couldn't do that today because they obviously have like a year's worth of work. So to if get you the grant the special ready. permit, if they need to start site work within two years of that. But I think if, if they're willing to continue it, mm -hmm. I, the period of continuance, I think, has got to be as short as we can possibly make it. Mm -hmm. Okay? I mean, putting it out another month, month and a half, you know, I don't, is it possible that we could even get a council input in, on how to, how to write a permit around something like this and have it ready to go on? Uh, Town council uh, is extremely busy. Right I know, now. I know. <laughs> But it'd be nice yeah. if we could do this <coughs> at the next meeting. To get the CPDC and have plenty of time to view it during that process. But um, well, just give you, I mean, the earliest would be. Um, earliest would be October 2nd. Oh, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. we need, I need to bring up October. And yes. motion made and, and change it, change the date because the date is wrong. That was my mistake. Uh, my personal calendar, I had the ninth. The date is the second. Is it the it's the second. Well, that's what I thought. Oh, the second. ninth wouldn't be the first Wednesday. Yeah, that was my mistake. Second. 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 Yes. Mm -hmm. Since I made the motion, I'll, I'll ask for reconsideration. Okay. Well, I can't do that until we're back on. Right, until other business. Yeah, other yeah. business. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Well, I think, you know, Looking at that, if, if we're two weeks out, um, would be the 18th. I don't know, is that something that uh, can be hammered out? Uh, I, I don't think so. I think the second would be a, a better. Yeah. I mean, I will say CPDC does have excessive input on special permits and they can ask for other things when granting a special permit they can go back I and know. forth with the applicant so it does grant them some flexibility there if they have the determination um, and again it also extends time for town council review but again it's zoning board determination first and foremost so Um, I don't. I don't think the second would be. What do we have for the second now? We would have 55 Walker's Brick, and we got an application today for Nugent Lane. So we're looking at two cases on the second right now, and potentially this one. So that would be a pretty busy night. Well, not necessarily. If we can get something worked out, that can be taken care of very, very quickly. It might be, you know, yeah. Yeah, if something if it could be, if something could be drafted, yes, by, mm -hmm. by by town council, right? you know, and I, very quickly. And you know, in drafting something like that, you could always have the you know, help of the attorney come in Absolutely. and work with somebody. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate the time. Thank you very much.
Um, I guess from the applicant's perspective, unless the board wanted to solicit any public input this evening, um, after that we request a continuance, um, or if the board wants to, to vote to continue, um, so that we can try to work through any potential conditions or concerns the board might have with town council and through the town planner. So this would be to, to the next, like... Well, I know that you have, I guess, a very busy docket on the next September here. In September, <coughs> yeah. And it's probably the 2nd of October. Okay. Well, if there's no availability for the next, we were thinking and we were chatting as well while you were gone that uh, we, we'll get we're going to get town council input on how best to try to cover this thing with you a know. permit, okay. if that's feasible, and that uh, we're going to seek to try to even get a draft of such a document such that we could review it at that night and hopefully proceed forward. Uh, okay. Because I think, you, again, I'll repeat, uh, everybody around this table seems to be in support of this this project. The question is, how do we get there? Right. Okay. <laughs> it's your schedule. And so uh, your request, I guess, is to continue this. Well, you, we're not today yet. We're not there yet. We got two other things. One is to recognize Hillary. Oh, excuse me, Hillary. We are going to ask for input. Then, 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 uh, and, and I'll put. I do have public comment. Okay. Um, I would like to agree with the other members of the board. I think this is a good use for this site. Um, and I think we've covered a lot of the other questions that I would have already. So. Okay, thank you. There's public comment. We haven't got it yet, so we're going to open it up. Uh, I'll open the meeting up to, uh, to public input. Does anyone here wish to speak on this subject? If you are, stand up and raise your hand. And we'll swear you in. Okay. We have an email from Anna Butter who could not attend tonight. Okay. Uh, very short email. I'll close the public portion. So this will be the last. Item, I guess, since nobody else. Sure. We do have one input from Anna Butter. Uh, says here, good afternoon. I am the owner of 12 Pine Vale <coughs> Avenue in Reading. I cannot attend the public hearing this evening. Despite my absence, I would like to strongly request that the board have the Community Planning and Development Commission assess the parking proposal presented at tonight's meeting. Thank you. Jennifer Colleen. So entered into the record. I don't think that alters the course of action that we've uh, I think concluded, and uh, so we'll now act on your request for continuation until October 2nd. Do you have a motion for such? So moved. Bob, uh, do I have a second? Second. Okay, any seconds? All in favor? Five zero zero. Let's see if we can get there. Thank, Thank you very much. much for your time. Have a good night. Motion that was made earlier to continue self command. Uh, uh, yes. 55 one. 55 one. Case, case 1909. Uh, I'd like to change the uh, modify or correct the date on that from the 9th of October to the 2nd of October. Thank right. you. Which is the first we Wednesday when we normally meet in. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. And I think we need to let them know. Because yes, they left absolutely. here, they yeah. got 10. Nine. Absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we need to let them know. Yeah. Take care of that. Okay. So I'll second that motion if we need okay. it. Okay. Uh, uh, second that. All in favor? 500. Yeah. Change to uh -huh. mm -hmm. seconds. Okay. All right. I think what's left here for this evening is. Say goodbye to Mike. Okay. Good night. Well, we'll say goodbye to Mike. Thanks, everyone. Good night. Uh, thank you. And, uh,
I think we are have a set of minutes, the length of which we took a first look see at <laughs> the last time. Let's see if we can try again. All right, which is two of them. One is June sixth, and one is uh, June fifth, and one is June nineteenth. Let's start with June fifth. I'll give you a few minute moments to take a look at that. The meeting tonight corresponds with the open houses for all the elementary schools today. Mm -hmm. So. And left early. <laughs> so maybe. Yeah, that's a good one. Be on the next one already. Um, I'm fine. I don't know. You almost done? I don't see. Looks like it's a pretty good job. Yeah. 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 Does anybody have any comments? Uh, six, five minutes? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. I'll make a motion. That entertain a motion, accept as is. As is. Uh, I'll make that motion. 
I'll second that. Yeah. Seconds it. All in favor? Five zero zero. Good. Let's take a quick look at number nine. Six I don't know. Yes, I was just looking at so I was making sure that you Oh. What we're looking at now is the 16th, the 19th? The uh, June mm -hmm. 19th, yeah. Copied directly from the ninth, uh, the fifth. Mm -hmm. Didn't we have different? Another pretty good job. Yeah, Isn't it a different case? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. Like I just had a question on these. Seems that uh, it's Andrew did the minutes as opposed to Amanda on the 19th. You're I stating did. these uh, minutes? I did both of these minutes. <laughs> <laughs> like they were done by the same person. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. So it seems like part of the Walnut Street got into the Salem Street notes. Mr. Hagstrom and Mr. Cowett are from case number 1910, not 1911, on page two, the second and third pair. Like, Mr. Hagstrom is day. I don't know. I can't. Oh, never mind. Something about both driveways. Right. I'm Sorry. I don't myself. remember. No, I'm trying to remember Salem Street driveways. I don't remember it being two driveways on Salem Street. I believe you're right. I think that was Walnut Street, so I think you're right. Mr. Potter, you think? Salem Street. That's right. Sorry. Mm -hmm. yeah. So where's the change? Nothing. I was just questioning. I think I'm miscon... I'm there confused. There's a question on the two driveways at 79 and 81 Salem Street. There was two driveways proposed um, or existing, and I right. believe there is, yeah. Right. Okay. So we're okay? Yes. yes. I just have to have Hillary and their members present, so we'll have to have <coughs> as amended if there's no other comments. Okay. So that's the only correction, right? Just add Hillary. Yep. Yeah. I'll entertain a motion to accept I'll, uh, the minutes as written. A motion to accept the minutes of June 19th as amended. Second. Second. Five seconds. All in favor? Five zero zero. Okay. Thank you. Uh, before I ask for an adjournment, I think the thing we we need to make damn sure that at the next meeting on 55 Walker Brook, mm -hmm. that Kyle is here, mm -hmm. 
Eric is here, and uh, most of everybody else is here. And, and that they review the video from the guy. And they got to review the video. That's so right. That's the important thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Nick, Nick, off, Nick needs to be here. I need to be here. You need to be and here. Uh, Eric needs to be here. And Kyle. Those are the five that Absolutely. were added on that thing initially. Yeah. And if do you, do you have a form for the Mullen rule? I do. Uh, yeah, if you if you get that square yeah. away, I'll be happy to sign it the next meeting we have. Great. <coughs> the 18th. You should probably yeah. sign it too. But I'll, I'll sign it for uh, right. yeah the meeting on uh, June the 5th, 5th, the first yeah. one in Walkersburg. Yeah. 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 Okay. So let's make yeah. sure that uh, those guys review it. Yeah. And they sign off. When they yeah. Uh, any other thoughts? I did sit in on the uh, select board executive oh, yeah. session. Uh, and since it was an executive session, I'm not going to talk about it other than to say that the bill is a process. The bill is a process. <laughs> it's, like process. Really it's in the process. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So, yeah. I have to say oh, that I, I bowed out. Uh, <laughs> uh, I thought it was a little much, uh, so I just. <laughs> I, I, left, I left there at 12.30. Because that was already a long time. I got there for the 10 o'clock, and, and, and uh, they were an hour behind schedule. So, uh, and then it grew to an hour and a half. That's good. Yeah, thank you for coming. <laughs> but anyway, okay, I'll obtain a motion to adjourn. So moved. No second. I knew you would, John. <laughs> Us old guys, you know, we're going to get going. All in favor? Okay. Yeah, it doesn't look like John's stepping Thank down you anytime. Thank you. <laughs> and you'll get a council to. going on, yes. on that property. It would be yep. nice if we could and have we'll, a draft of a draft with document. conditions. Yep. Okay. What are yep. the conditions he thinks should apply? Absolutely. And that way we could.